So you want to make a short film, but you don't have a crew. Well, you know what? Normally in life, not having friends is a disadvantage, but you can work it to your advantage and make a great short film even without a crew. Before the pandemic, I made one of the smallest short films I made since high school. It's called Hawaii, and it was just me and the actors out there doing the thing. And I'm so proud of that short film, Hawaii. I don't think anybody would ever suspect it was made without a crew. So today I'm going to go over my top five tips for you on how to make your own short film, even if you are forever alone. Tip number one, if you don't have a crew, that means you need to be that much more prepared before you show up to set. For example, in Hawaii, I was filming at a cemetery location, at this rented house location, and in both cases, if I had forgotten something like extra batteries or something as mundane as paper towels, I could have been a disaster because I would have had to leave set and I would have had to go get that stuff myself, which would blow the whole schedule for the day. And then I would have realized I also forgot a gun to kill myself with. You need to make a list, a master list of every possible detail that you might forget about uh, before shoot day. So during your pre-production and those weeks leading up to it, if you're about to fall asleep and you get a thought, oh, I should have an extra shirt for the actor in case fake blood gets on it or whatever, go write it down. By the time you get ready to shoot, you're gonna have a whole list of things that are all gonna be checked off and you're gonna be able to go into set confident that you have not left anything behind. Second tip, it can obviously feel like a big limitation to not have a crew, but if you use it to your advantage, it can actually be a strength for your project. We were filming in this house location not having a crew running around and coming up to me and asking me a bunch of questions, instead just having silence with just me and this one actor, I was able to find better compositions on set and just really focus and get in the zone. And this little raccoon dude popped up and started hanging out around the house. Now, if I'd had a crew, we would have scared him away. We wouldn't have been quick enough to turn on the camera and record him and incorporate him into the film. A crew member would have gotten bitten, gotten rabies, I would have gotten a lawsuit, my whole life would have been over. But since it was just me, this raccoon's in my short film now. And there's a couple of shots that he poked his head in adds so much character to the film. I never would have gotten that with a crew. Same thing actually happened on Will the Machine. We were picking up some extra shots on our last day. It was just me, the actor, and my DP. And this deer showed up outside the window. It adds so much production value when you're able to just spy on wildlife or even your actors. It's a little easier to bear their soul in front of just one person that they know and trust as opposed to a whole crew full of strangers. Another example with why I'm filming out at that cemetery location. Obviously, I don't have a permit. I don't have permission to be there. This is Los Angeles. They want to kick you out of everywhere if you try to film. But since it's just me, my DSLR camera, a couple of actors in a car, it didn't look like anything was happening. And actually, security did roll up on me a couple of times. And I just told them, hey, I'm a photography student. I'm just taking some pictures for class. And, you know, he knew I was full of shit. But I gave him plausible deniability. I gave him an excuse. And I wasn't blocking the path or anything like that. So it just wasn't worth it for him to tell me to leave. So got to finish the shoot. You full of shit. Do you understand that? You full of shit. Now, if I had had even one extra crew member, say a sound guy with a big boom pole, absolutely I would have gotten kicked out of that place. So if you got no crew, take advantage. Go film in places that you would never be able to afford to film in with a crew and permits and all that stuff. You know, even have your actor mic'd up with a wireless lav mic and you can just go film a quick dialogue scene in line at Starbucks. They might not even know what's going on. It's a real beautiful thing to be able to just steal shots like that. Go to the cool library downtown, take them up in an airplane and burst into the cockpit and film a scene in there. They won't even know that you're in there. All right, next tip. You're gonna be responsible for monitoring the quality of the sound, the picture, and the performances simultaneously if you don't have a crew. And let me tell you, that is impossible. So what you have to do is make it easier on yourself by doing things like rehearse with your actors ahead of time. That way the performance is already dialed in before you even get there. Hopefully your actors are mic'd up with like wireless lav mics and you're monitoring it with headphones. But even when I'm monitoring the sound live, I miss things all the time. So you might want to account it to your schedule to have more time to look at playback after each take to check the sound and to check the picture. You can make audio even easier for yourself if you just write a short film that doesn't have that much dialogue. And then you can just record crappy scratch audio on set, re-record the audio, do ADR for your dialogue. You'll get super crisp dialogue. That's actually what I ended up doing with Hawaii. I only had the nice wireless lav mic for the house day, but when I was filming in the cemetery, I had to use my wired crappy lav mic and it ended up sounding super muffled and I wasn't happy with it. But it wasn't that many lines. I had the time. I had a shotgun microphone at my house. So I just called the actor over and we ADR'd all of his lines. Sounded super crisp and great. You should tell your mother about me quitting. 
But whatever you do, don't use not having a crew as an excuse for having bad audio. There is never an excuse for bad audio. As far as the camera, help yourself out there too. With Hawaii, I went to that cemetery location a few days before at the exact time I knew I'd be shooting. I put my own car there. I dialed in the camera settings, got it to look just how I wanted to, wrote it all down, and then I knew when I showed up on set that was gonna be squared away already. If you're trying to rack focus live while you're filming, your whole film's gonna end up looking like this. So if you're comfortable with that, great. Otherwise, I would suggest helping yourself out. Stop down your lens, use a wider lens, and try to keep the subject and the camera about the same distance from each other. That way you're not gonna to have to even think about focus while you're filming. Tip number four is you're going to need to shot list and schedule more thoroughly than you normally would if you don't have a crew. So I'll take my script, I'll have my notes on it, and then on the back I'll have a shot list that I create, and then I order the shots from the shot list in the most logical order to shoot the most efficiently, and then I break those ordered shots up into chunks and I write down at what time I should finish each chunk of shots if I'm going to make my day on time and on schedule. That way you can act as your own AD, your own producer and keep yourself on track. You know, every now and then you say, oh, it's two o'clock, I have to get these next two shots done by 2.30 if I'm gonna get back on schedule. Also, there's just a ton of peace of mind of just having everything in one document, especially when you're juggling a camera and microphones and all this other equipment. You need the one master document, which is basically just gonna be Ikea instructions for finishing the original short film you wanted to make. Except the only Allen wrench you need is your imagination. And that brings us to tip number five, which is you might not have a crew on set, but that doesn't mean that you can't get extra help in post-production and go the extra mile in post-production to take your whole film to the next level. So with Hawaii, I didn't have a crew on set, but I did call a colorist friend, waited for him to get available, and had him color the short film, which made it look so much better, added a lot of production value to the film. So do everything you can after you finish shooting to elevate your film. That also includes reshoots. You're the whole crew, right? So if something's not working in the edit, just pick up your camera. The crew's now assembled. Go reshoot the scene until it works. I had a pickup shot in the house scene, a crucial close up that I just didn't have time to get on the day and I was really upset about. Ended up being the best thing for the film because then I had all this time to set up that close up shot at my own place and really nail it. It was a difficult shot with like a rack focus going from one thing to another thing to another thing. If I had tried to squeeze it in at the house, it would have been a really shot. So if you got the right kind of project, and I think Hawaii is a great example of the right kind of film to do a no crew short film with. It's, you know, small, it's a quiet film, it's short. I highly recommend you go for it. You can make something really special. I'm so proud of that film. I don't think anybody would look at it and say it was only made for 600 bucks, which was my whole budget, one of the cheapest films I've made in a while. So definitely go for it. It's going to feel so much more personal and so much more you when your hands have literally gone through every part of the production by yourself. If you want some more sexy, sultry tips on making your own short film right now with no excuses, no waiting around, check out my eight minute short film crash course here and subscribe, just smash, obliterate, destroy, just, just leave in ruins my subscribe button because there's some really cool content coming up that you're not gonna wanna miss. And give me a thumbs up, you know, if you really wanna give me a thumbs down, <laughs> go ahead and be a hater, see if I care. Cause I get literally dozens of thumbs up every other month or so, and it's like, I won't even notice your hate. It'll just bead off of me like sweat on so much workout bicep. But please don't like the thumbs down button.